All right, so here we are on the 21st day of school. Okay. Today, uh, well, first of all, let me get my splash screen up. Uh, Today, we will be doing related rates. OK, so a derivative is a slope. It's the amount of change in one variable as another variable changes. OK, so it's the change in y all over the change in x. Okay, and you've seen this notation, the delta notation. And that's why we use d, uh, because of delta, the Greek letter representing change. Um, and if you go back to, you know, algebra 1, this was y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, which is how we came up with the whole concept of a derivative in the very beginning when we dealt with this graph and changing one variable and producing another. So we started with the slope formula at the very beginning of it all. And so this is a rate. All right. Now, right, so All right, let's look at an example of two things changing over the course of time. All right, I throw a pebble into a body of water. And as that ripple goes out, there are circles, right? under normal circumstances. And if I looked at this, I could say that my radius is changing as a, as a function of time. And my surface area of that circle changes as a function of time. OK? So what we have, if I wanted, let's, um, take an, uh, let's put some numbers to this. I have a good example. So if I have, at the time when the radius is equal to 4 inches, I want to find out how my area is changing as a function of time. And I'll say that my radius changes as a function of time at 1 inch per second. So that's, so first of all, it's moving at a certain speed. And at the, at the instantaneous second, at the instantaneous moment, when the radius is four inches, how fast is my surface area growing? Okay. All right. Because if, um, just like uh, you've all probably done um, at some point in some math class, you said, all right, uh, you know, if I order a pizza that's 12 inches at a certain amount of dollars versus a pizza at 16 inches at a certain number of dollars, right? As the radius goes out, because it's a squared term, your surface area grows pretty fast, right? No, not exponentially. Geometrically. Right. Well, if it was exponential, then it would be... Uh, a, a constant to time, right? or constant to a function to a radius. All right. Well, what I want to know is how does the area change with time? Okay. How much? How fast is the surface? Sorry. How fast is that area of that circle growing at this at this moment when? That is true. So what I'm trying to find is a way to relate area 
time, and radius. Okay. And one thing that I find that's very useful is to kind of collect all of these derivative terms, all these dA's, dT's, dR's, dx's, all of them together. And if you if you remember your chemistry, when you did conversion factors, you know, when you were saying how many seconds are in a year, right? Remember that? All of those crazy conversion factors you had to do? There were moments where you had to say to yourself, all right, what do I have? What do I need? What steps do I have to find in order to get there? Like, what conversion factors do I need? You know, how, you know, I need to know how many seconds are in a minute, how many minutes are in an hour, how many hours are in a day, right? And so on and so forth. So, dA dt is going to be equal to dr dt times something. Well, I've got a good new, I've got a good denominator. Dt. My denominator is already good, but what I need now is a way to turn my dr into a dA. Does that make sense? Because I've got half of the puzzle, now I need the other half. And the thing that is really, really good about Leibniz notation is this kind of stuff, where you can actually dr. What I need is a relationship between area and radius. How is the area and the radius related to one another? In a circle, how are they related to each other? The area is equal to pi r squared. That's how the radius and the area are related. Now, there's, there's going to be some geometry almost always in these problems, okay? Where you, you kind of have to say to yourself, all right, what's the geometry? What's the calculus? How are they related? So, dA dr would be equal to 2 pi r. The derivative... So the change in area as radius changes is 2 times pi times r, OK? So dA dt is dr dt, which was 1, and dA dr is 2 pi r. And now I plug in the value that I'm interested in. So, huh? What? I took the derivative. In order to find dA dr, you know, if I'm looking at a static picture of a circle, right? That's not changing. The area and the radius are related by pi r squared, right? But it, as I change the radius, the area changes. Or if I change the area, the radius changes. And the relationship between those two speeds is 2 pi r. Um, it, 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 yeah, and if you were to look at the area, the, sorry, the surface area of a sphere, what's that? Four thirds pi r cubed. So, um, yeah. And what would happen when you took that derivative? In fact, we're going to actually, sorry, the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, my fault, sorry. The surface area is, um, uh, the surface area of sphere is 1 third pi r squared, because it's an area. So now let's try this. We have a balloon, 
And where are my notes? Sorry, right, I want to get those right here. One second. Get my get the right page out so I'm reading the problem to you properly. This one I'm I think I'm stealing right out of the book. All right. Um, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. So the air is being pumped in, so at a rate of, what did I say, 4.5? 4.5 cubic feet per minute. All right, now, what is that? 4.5 cubic feet per minute, what does that mean? Is that, in terms of a differential, d what d what is 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 my question. What should I call that? It's something. D, it's d something over d t, right? Because it's per per minute, isn't it? It's something d t. Well, all a volume is is. Um, some length cubed, okay? If you think about it, like a liter is nothing more than um, a cubic, uh, no, a, a cubic centimeter is a milliliter, right? So, I mean, a cubic, if one cubic centimeter is a millimeter, I can relate volume back down to length again, okay? But going back here, is this, what, what is this? Is this a, how, what am I dealing with? Cubic feet is a volume, a length, or uh, an area? Cubic feet. It's a volume. dv dt. It's a change in volume. And you can get that from the, from the context. Air is being pumped in at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. OK? So what am I doing? I'm blowing air into my balloon, and the volume is changing. You should be writing this down. Wrap your head around it while you're writing. Find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is two feet. So listen to that sentence, because you're going to have to be able to differ, you know, take apart this word problem. Find the rate of change of the radius. So what am I really looking for? dr dt. when the radius is two feet. It's a really big balloon. Two foot radius? That's a four foot wide balloon. That's a big balloon. It's a weather balloon. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, there we go. OK, so here's what I have. I have dvdt and drdt. What do you think I need? I need dr and dv connected, right? So I need. So let's go through this. I I need dr dt, and I have dv dt. So what do you think I'm going to need to multiply it by? Yeah, I need dr over dv in order to get what I'm looking for. Okay, so I need a relationship from the geometry that relates volume and radius. And the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. You all right? Okay. Now, to get, I, I could, if I really wanted to, take the cube root to get r alone, right? I could, if I wanted to. I could for r and then take a derivative with in, in terms of v, right? But why? I don't want to do that. That's not nice. 
Instead, what I'm going to do is this. D do dv dr. And this becomes 4 pi r squared. So dr dv would just be the reciprocal of that. So now this is dv dt is 4.5. And now I do 1 over 4 pi r squared. And I can plug in my r. I just took the derivative. Plugging in two, gives me 16 pi. And since I don't like decimals and fractions mixing, I can't just multiply it by 2. I can multiply it by 2 over 2. You can't just walk up and say something, hey, I don't like this thing. Multiply it by 2. No, I can multiply it by 1, but not by 2. Right. It's like there's not enough time in the day. Here, multiply it by 2. <laughs> right. Yeah, right? All right, let's try another one. Yeah, we're done. Um, yeah, of course. I don't understand why you, like, how you took that and put that in. Taking, oh, this piece? There, 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 there. Yeah, I just took the derivative. It's the product rule. Um, the, I multiply. I, when I take the derivative, the 3 comes down, cancels out with the 1 third, okay. and I get 4. It is the product rule. No, it's not. The, it's not the product rule. It's the power rule. The four and the pi are constants. That's the geometry. Okay. So if I was going to do this, I would say stepwise. Stepwise, the process is um, one. So I decipher the word problem by saying, all right, what am I looking at? I'm looking at dr, dt, the, you know, dx, dy, whatever the heck the problem says. Okay. And I list all of my data. I dump, I, I decode it, and I put it on the page. Two, draw a picture. Drawing a picture will often help you. Okay. There's a geometry in these problems. There's a lot of geometry in these problems. So drawing a picture is very critical in a lot of cases. Three. So, you know, you might have from the word problem, and you know, what you have to begin with, what you're looking for. Now the question is, what are the missing pieces to collect and put into an equation that will solve everybody? Okay. 
you know, what dr, dvs, dts, dh, DV, all of those things that you need. Four, go to the geometry. Actually, I shouldn't say plug-in, I should say subs replace. Sometimes you're, you're not looking for a number. You might just be looking for an equation, you know, and saying, how are these two terms related? Where is another problem that would say, what is the speed or the area or the volume or the height at a certain time? Yeah. So if you don't know the exact um, formula, you need to write these two points. Well, you know, a lot of times these come down to the very basic geometries that would be on a formula sheet. Um, like the Pythagorean theorem, um, or you know the area of a trapezoid, or something like that. You know, as these things, you know, or a simple right triangle trig. Okay, and in fact, we're going to do one that involves right some right triangle trig in a second. Okay. This was one that had more uh, pieces involved in it. Okay, I have the surface area of a cube. So if I have a cube, I'm going to draw a cube. Now the surface area of a cube is increasing at a rate of 20 centimeters per second. Centimeters squared, sorry, it's an area. Okay, what is that? How do I write that as a differential? Right, DA, DT. So wh what is changing as a function of what? Well, area is increasing as a function of time. And I can get that by looking at the units. It's an area per second, right? You can also get it from the context. Find the rate of increase of the volume. When the edge of the cube is 10. Centimeters. Okay. So you have to kind of parse out the important information that's in that sentence. Rate of increase in the volume. What is that? How do I write that? DV over DT. Okay. Okay. 
that's what I'm looking for. When the edge is 10, I need a variable for the edge. X. I don't want to use E simply because E is a constant, and I don't want to abuse my variables. I avoid that. So we have dA dt and dV dt. So let's collect them all. We have dA dt. We need dV dt. And we've got time, and we've got this side length of x. All right, well, the time piece is already good, OK? Because this is what I have. This is what I need, right? And somehow, all of these guys are related to the length of the side, right? So let's see. DV dt, and let's, we have dA dt, so let's go on with it. All right. Yeah, that's really what I would love. I would love to have dV over dA. How do the volume and the area change? How does the volume change when the area changes? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. But what do I do? What do I know? Let's go back to my list of stuff. I've deciphered my words. I've drawn a picture. I've collected all my derivative terms. And we're trying to find the thing that we're missing. So now the next piece is to go to the geometry and see if we can find equations relating vo volume and area and the side length together. OK. So what do I know about a cube in its volume and its area? So yeah, volume is equal to what? x cubed. And area is equal to, well, a side of it, one face of the cube, is x squared. 6x squared. All right. Great. So now let's try and get relationships between these guys. Because if I take a derivative of the left of the left term, the area equation, I'll get dA dt dx. Nice. So this guy is really going to be dv dx times dx dA. That's how I'm going to get it. That's really what I'm going to do. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and say, other way. What? D, yeah, dv, dA. That was right the first time. All right. So here's that whole chemistry conversion factor stuff coming into play. It's the same idea. What do I have? What do I need? How do I get there? What do I, you know, how do I, how do I put these pieces together? So let's take those two derivatives. DA DX would be what? And DV DX. 
3x squared. And now it's literally a matter of plug and chug. So dA dt was 20. Now dV dx is 3x squared. And dx dA would be taking this guy and flipping him upside down, taking his reciprocal. Now, I was interested in finding um, when the side length was 10. So this gives me, oh, if I simplify this, I wind up with 5x. And this is a volume as a function of time. So this would be um, inches squared, uh, inches cubed, all over seconds. Is that, does it, thank you very much, I'll be here till June. Um, thanks. Um, <laughs> does, does this kind of make somewhat of a bit of sense? Great. Let's try one. Now, there's a difference between agreeing with it and applying it. All right. Let's try this. All right. Here we have an airplane is flying. Guys, an airplane is flying on a flight path that will take it directly over a radar tracking station, as shown in the figure. Here is my radar tracking station. There's my airplane. OK. Um, if, and let's get some variables. That's so unrealistic, but we're going to go with it. Six miles. No airplane is six miles up. Well, no, that's not. Well, yeah, it kind of is. 30,000 feet. It's close. Sure. Um, space is defined at 100 kilometers. So, anyway. If S is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour, miles per hour. When S equals 10 miles. What's the speed of the plane? The plane, the plane. So first thing you got to do, and you guys are going to do this one, is decipher the word problem. Go through those steps. Decipher the word problem. Figure out what all of the things you are. Figure out what you need. Go to the geometry. Get an equation. All right. Give you a couple of minutes to work on this one. Work together if you need to. Okay, so a lot of you guys are almost there, if not there, and I want to make sure. Okay.
brings us both together in one equation is that Pythagorean theorem. That's the space. That's the place where I want us to be. Just for a second. We need to get there. All right. So what what do I have? Decipher my word problem. Break it down to me. What what do I have? I have ds over dt equals 400. All right. What else do I have? Well, what, I mean, what else do I need or what do I have? Talk to me. Go, walk me through it. S equals 10. And the speed of the plane, what does that mean? What does the speed of the plane mean? D what over DT? DX over DT. So... The first step was to decipher the word problem. The second step was to come up with an equation. So if we're looking for dx dt, and we have ds dt, my denominators are already good. What do I really need now? Okay, I need a relationship between x and s. All right. Did everyone get there? Yes? You guys, everyone got here. Okay, cool. No problem. Now what we need is a relationship between S and X. The geometry says that I have a formula that can relate S and X. Mm -hmm. So s squared is equal to x squared plus 36. Yes? Pythagorean theorem. Oh, that's s, not 5. Yeah. Now, yeah, 5 can't decrease at a rate. Yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. So now we have to take a derivative with respect to time. Okay? S is a function of time. X is a function of time. So now, if I take the derivative of the left-hand side, I get 2S, S prime. But S prime, what is S prime? S prime is a derivative with respect to time. That's ds dt. It's an S, not a 5. My 5s are hard and rigid. S is... Okay. I, do, I can't... I, I really don't want to go back and change my variables. Okay. So now this becomes 2x dx dt plus 0. It's not a 5. It's an S. Right. Okay. What are you saying? Okay. Yeah, he's still he's dwelling on my handwriting. So I need S and X related to each other, okay? So just kind of like the way we did the last trick, we're going to get the X, the DS, DX, sorry, DX, DS in different, in different parts, okay? So how can I maybe change my black upper left equation a little bit to deal with what I have? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, no, dx over dt times dt over ds. Mm -hmm. 
Well, actually, we already kind of already have DSDT, yeah, right? Right. So we can go ahead and just straight. And if you'll notice, we kind of already have the things that we're looking for. So let's go back and clean it up. And DSDT And now rearranging this, okay? What do I want? Dx over ds? That's one of the beauties of Leibniz notation is it works like algebra work. You can cancel stuff. So ds dt times s over x is what I'm looking for. And ds dt is 400. s over x. Now, S and X, we know S. S is how much? 10. When S is 10, what is X? We're going to have to, how do we get X now? Go back into the Pythagorean theorem and find it. And according to the Pythagorean theorem, um, 100 minus 36 is 64, so it's 8. Okay, good question. Big mess, let's look at it in pieces. All right. We had a relationship with the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So when we did implicit differentiation yesterday, there was that one piece where I talked about both functions being, both x and y being functions of time, right? Okay, so I took a derivative of both s of the whole thing with respect to time. And we were using the prime notation, right? And so that prime is really this. It's ds dt. It's, the, it's how does speed change with time? And how does, sorry, how does the hypotenuse change with time distance? And how does the ground speed, right, D, dx dt? Here? Okay. So we're good here. Now, because they're on both sides. I mean, I can just, I can rearrange this thing like algebra. Right. And then I rearrange. Take the S over, bring the S and the X down. Rearrange your algebra. You can cross multiply if it makes you feel better. Okay. And that gives me DX CS, which is S over X. And then I plug it in and solve. Well, we needed to know how S and X were related to each other in the, ge in the geometry. That's the Pythagorean theorem. 
but s and x are related in terms of how they change. Because if, if you think about it, if x gets small, if, if x gets smaller, right, s also gets smaller, right? But not at the same time, not at the same speed, right? What ratio? Oh no 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 no! You knew the instantaneous speed. You said at the you know at the at this moment in time, what is the speed that's that's uh, of s that's changing, of, of x that's changing when s is, is changing as well. You see, you had one part of the equation. You didn't have the other part of the equation. You had how the hypotenuse is changing, not how the ground speed was changing, and that's what you were looking for. Yeah. Oh, f yeah, sorry, my units. Um, this was in miles per second per hour? Per second. Per second. And if you were to, uh, so the speed is 500 miles per second, and it's decreasing, so if you were looking for a velocity, it would have a negative sign in front of it. Yeah, but, but it's decreasing. But this is the rate of change. No problem. All right. Um, if you want a little practice, I'm not going to assign this as homework. Um, try in your homework, uh, let's say, 19, uh, sorry, 20 through 23, if you wanted some extra practice. I'm not going to collect it, but I'll answer questions about it next class. Oh, sorry, uh, page 154. optional. And this episode of the Morocco Show has been brought to you by DSDX.